Processing a pay run in Sage Payroll In this video, we'll show you how to process your payroll. We'll cover the following steps. Confirming and changing your pay date. Adding absences such as statutory leave. Processing your payments and deductions. Finalising your pay run, including sending your full payment submission to HMRC. We will also cover any additional tasks once your payroll has been completed. Let's get started. When you first log in to payroll, you'll see an overview of the next pay run, including the pay date, an estimated employee and employer cost, and how many employees are included within that pay run. The estimated values are based on your payments and deductions from your last completed pay run, so these values may change. You can begin processing your pay run from the Summary tab or the Pay Runs tab. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll start in Summary. To start processing your payroll, click Process Pay Run. Step 1 of the pay run is to confirm your pay date. This is automatically set for you based on your calendar settings. The pay date should be the date you're paying your employees not the date you are processing the payroll. This date will appear on your pay slips and your full payment submission to HMRC. To amend the pay date manually, click here. The available dates are shown in grey. You can't select any dates outside of the current tax period. If you'd like to amend your pay calendar settings, click the Settings tab at the top of the screen and then click here. You can amend any current pay frequencies or add new ones. Make any necessary changes and click Save. Next time you process your pay run, the date will be automatically set based on your changes, meaning you don't have to manually amend this date each time you run your payroll. Once you are happy with the date selected, click Next. Step 2 of your pay run is to enter absences. Here you can add statutory absences, such as statutory sick pay or statutory maternity pay. Absences such as unpaid leave or holiday pay are not entered in this step. Once an absence has been entered, you'll see this listed here. Any historical absences showing here have been processed and any entitlement paid to the employee, therefore shouldn't be removed. Removing a historical absence will reverse any payments made and cause a correction on your employee's pay. Statutory payments are paid up to and including your current pay date. For example, if you pay your employees monthly and your pay date is the 25th of each month, the statutory payment will be paid up to and including the 25th. Any remaining statutory payments due up to the end of the month will roll over to the next pay period. Statutory payments adhere to HMRC legislation and qualifying conditions. For more information on specific absences, click here. In this demonstration, we'll add statutory sick pay and statutory maternity pay to these employees. Before entering your absence, make sure you select the relevant employee. To set up an absence for the selected employee, hover over Add Absence. This will show all available absences for the employee. Select the absence from the list. In this case, we're setting up statutory sick pay. The information requested here differs depending on the absence selected. The first section of this form is the declaration. Here, you'll declare whether your employee has contacted you about the absence and provided any necessary documentation. Use the Contact Received drop-down to select Yes or No. If you select No, the statutory sick pay is withheld. Enter the start and end date of the absence. The end date can be amended later. For example, if your employee is on long-term sick and you don't know their return date. Once happy with all of the information entered, click Save. Next, we'll look at entering statutory maternity leave. Choose the relevant employee from the left, hover over Add Absence, and then click Maternity. 
enter the due date of the child here. If you've received the MAT B1 from your employee, select Yes. If you haven't, select No. If you select No, no statutory payments will be made to the employee. The qualifying week will automatically appear based on the due date entered. This is the 15th week before the baby is due. Their average earnings in the eight weeks before the qualifying week are used to calculate the first six weeks of their maternity pay. For the employee to be entitled to statutory maternity pay from you, they must have been continuously employed for at least 26 weeks before the qualifying week. Enter the maternity leave start and end date here. And when you're happy with the information entered, click Save. When you're happy with the absences entered and you're ready to move on to the next step, click Next. Any statutory payments due to the employees will show in the Pay section of the Pay Run. Entering your pay information. In step 3 of your pay run, you can enter payments and deductions. You can see your employee list on the left. On the right, you'll see the payments and deductions assigned to the selected employees and their current net pay. To check and edit the employee tax and national insurance details, click their name, make any necessary changes and click save. Any important messages or information regarding the selected employee will appear here. If this isn't your first pay run, the information entered in the last pay run will automatically appear. If the pay values differ from the last pay run, you can amend the existing payments and deductions here. To add a new payment, hover over Add Payment and choose an existing payment or set up a new one. Please note, salary payments enable you to enter one lump sum, whereas hourly payments will provide boxes for both a number of hours and an hourly rate. For more information about the different types of payments, please visit the Help Centre by clicking Help at the top of your screen. In the Deductions section, you'll see PAYE and National Insurance. These values cannot be amended. To edit an existing deduction, amend the values here. To add a new deduction, hover over Add Deduction and choose an existing deduction or set up a new one. If the employee is enrolled into a pension, you'll see the pension deductions here. To view more information about the employee and employer pension calculations, hover over Manage Enrolment and click Manage Contributions. If you'd like to add a message to the payslip, click here. If your employee is not due any money this pay period and is remaining in your employment, select this checkbox to exclude them from this pay run. If the employee is receiving a statutory payment, you will not be able to exclude them from this pay run. If you need to add a new starter to this pay run, click Create Employee. It's important all employees appear here, as once you've finalised your pay run, you can't add any new employees to that pay run. Any changes you have made are automatically saved. Therefore, if you need to exit the payroll and return and continue later, you will not lose any data you've entered. When you're ready to finalise the pay run, click Next. Finalising your pay run. In step 4 of the pay run, you can review the employee pay using a detailed report and view draft pay slips. You can see an employee pay breakdown here. To view the detailed report, click here. Within this report, you'll see a breakdown. This includes an employee pay slip summary, a breakdown of payments and deductions, employer costs, HMRC totals, payment method information and year-to-date values. Check you're happy with these values before completing your pay run. If you'd like to view draft pay slips for all employees, click Export All Draft Pay Slips. 
Alternatively, you can view these one by one using this link. These payslips are for your information only and shouldn't be distributed to your employees. The employee payslip is available in the next step of your pay run. Before you complete the pay run, you can also see a breakdown of each employee, their pension deductions and the employer pension information. To finalise your values and submit your full payment submission to HMRC, click Complete Pay Run. If this is your first pay run, you'll be prompted to enter your user ID and password for HMRC's online services. Enter your HMRC Gateway credentials here and select the checkbox if you'd like to store these details for future submissions. If this isn't your first pay run and you've previously saved credentials, you're not prompted for these details. However, if you do need to amend them, you can do so by clicking this link. To submit your FPS and finalise your pay run, click Submit. You will now see the completed pay run screen. You can check if your FPS has been successful here. If the submission has failed, you can find out more information by clicking Resolve Issue. If you receive an authentication error, usually with the code 1046, this means HMRC doesn't recognise the credentials you have entered. This could be because you've mistyped them or they are incorrect. To troubleshoot the issue and retry your submission, click here. Let's take a look at the next steps to your pay run. In this section, we'll cover producing your pay slips, running your P32 report, and submitting an APS. Let's start with producing pay slips. You can distribute pay slips to your employees by printing them, emailing them, or upload them to view online. To set up and use online pay slips, click Settings, then Online Pay Slips. Follow the on screen steps or click here for more information. To return to your completed pay run screen, click Pay Runs and then click the relevant pay run from the list. To print, view or save all employees' pay slips at once, use this drop down. To do this for each employee individually, click this icon. To email all pay slips at once, use the drop down. Each employee will receive their own payslip only. To email each employee individually, click this icon. If you don't see this icon next to an employee, their record is not set up for emailing payslips. Edit the employee record to rectify this. Your P32 employer payment record shows what you owe to HMRC and any reclaims during the reporting period. This report is produced tax monthly or quarterly depending on your HMRC reporting frequency. To check your chosen HMRC reporting frequency, go to Settings and then Payroll Settings. To run your P32, click Pay Runs and then select any pay run within the tax month or quarter. In the completed pay run screen, the link appears here. You can also run your P32 from the Summary tab. If this link does not appear, you have not completed all pay runs within the tax month or quarter. To view the report, click here. This report includes your total liability to HMRC. This will also include statutory payment reclaims and any employment allowance reclaims. Your payment due to HMRC is shown here. This value is the calculation of all liabilities minus any reclaims. Therefore, there's no extra calculation required. The payment to HMRC is not automatically sent through payroll. You still need to pay HMRC the total amount due. The deadline for your payment depends on your payment method. If you're paying by bank transfer, this is due by the 22nd of the following month. Payments via cheque are due by the 19th of the following month. An employer payment summary tells HMRC about any extra information not included on your FPS, for example, reclaims of statutory payments. 
you should complete the EPS process in Sage Payroll at the end of the tax month or quarter, even if there's nothing extra to declare. To run your EPS, click Pay Runs, select any pay run within the tax month or quarter. Within the completed pay run screen, the link appears here. You can also run your EPS from the Summary tab. If you have not completed all pay runs within the tax month or quarter, the EPS will not be available to submit. Once you have completed all pay runs within the period, you can submit your EPS. Once you have processed your pay run, you should send any relevant information to your pension provider. You can find pension deduction information in the completed pay run window. Depending on your provider, you can produce a report or send this information directly to your provider. If you require further help, you can browse and search our Help Centre by clicking the Help option at the top of your payroll. You have now learned how to complete a pay run in Sage Payroll.